Welcome to the Belmont Church Daily Devotional. My name is Mick Antonitis, and I'm your devotional host today. I'm the retired World Outreach Pastor of Belmont Church, and now one of its elders. I want us to take a peek into one of the most profound books of prophecy in the Bible, the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament. Listen carefully to these words from Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 and 9. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. Listen carefully to both the content as well as to who spoke them. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. God is indeed the creator, the author, the potter, the sovereign king, the master. We are the created, the clay vessels, the subjects, the servants. And even though we are all created in the image of God, we are not divine. Not even close. We do not have the power of God or the knowledge of God or the goodness of God. According to King Solomon in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, God has blessed us by putting eternity in each of our hearts. And he has also made each one of us beautiful in his eyes. But God is so unimaginably higher than we are more wise, more understanding, more pure, more loving, more kind. His ways and his thoughts are so perfect that we might get the impression from these lofty words in Isaiah that God is so far away from us, that he is so different from us and so much better than us, that he's unapproachable, that he's uninterested in us and does not care that he has more important things to do with his higher thoughts and his higher ways than to be concerned about us. And that is where, my friends, we would be terribly wrong. Because nothing could be further from the truth. The many religions of mankind have such gods, gods who are powerful tyrants, demanding appeasement, threatening and punishing frequently, grouchy, distant, unapproachable, unpredictable, dangerous gods. But our God of Isaiah chapter 55 uses his higher thoughts and his higher ways to redeem that distance between us and him. Yes, he comes to us. He bridges that gap. He came as one of us, taking on our humanity, precisely because he does care about his created ones, about his beloved. He comes to see us. He swoops down and he gathers us in his arms as a mother and a father do. He opens his door to us and he leaves it open. He shares his kingdom and his estate with us. He feeds us daily, he saves us, he heals us, he restores us, he renews us, he rescues us. He comes to live with his beloved so that one day we will go to live with him. His name, Emmanuel, God with us, Christ, Messiah, Jesus, the Savior. He does not come to condemn or to frighten. He comes to woo us. He comes for his bride. And he comes a very long way for us. This is how the God of Isaiah uses his higher thoughts and his higher ways. His words spoken in Isaiah chapter 55 are not meant to demean us or to belittle us. They're not spoken by an arrogant God, but by a loving God who knows what he is doing and why. An altogether mighty God 
who humbled himself to the point of death, even death on the cross for us. To do for us what we could not do for ourselves. For his ways and his thoughts are higher than ours. If you will bow with me, we will pray. Dear Father in heaven, we acknowledge your majesty and your glory. We exalt you and we praise you. And Father, we thank you. For you are worthy of our honor and our worship. Your ways and your thoughts are so much higher than ours. You and you alone are our great God. Who are we that you would be mindful of us? Yet you are. You do know us and you have come to us and you have blessed us and you have loved us. Thank you, Lord. We love you also. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all.